as i told it will be more or less almost similar to x ray but slightly more uh, complicated than x ray or mri okay so the first thing the first few introduction about radiology as such which we need to know is the father of radiology is uh, william conrad roentgen uh, who discovered the x ray uh, in 1895 this is uh, his wife's hand uh, we can see the ring in his wife's hand accidentally he has discovered uh, x ray so 8th november is uh, celebrated as world radiology day and the the consecutive year uh, thomas edison found fluoroscopy that is this x ray was used in medical uh, for the medical purpose in 1986 as fluoroscopy it's like in which the radiologist was directly visualizing the images uh, from the x ray or uh, calcium tungstate was used that's all not important but uh, just the name of the scientist is uh, important now john uh, wild is the one who introduce ultrasound uh, and he is called as a father of uh, ultrasound whereas ian donald introduced ultrasound for uh, the fetal assessment so he is called as father of obstetrics ultrasound okay so sir ian donald and uh, john wild are the two uh, important scientists in the field of ultrasound Seldinger's technique is very famous technique, which is followed by all intervention radiologists as well as other interventionists who are uh, entering the vessel. So it was discovered by the Seldinger, and he is one more scientist. So in ultrasound, we need to know about John Wild and Ian Donald. Okay, so there are so many others. I'll be giving this uh, PowerPoint uh, in which I have mentioned about all the important scientists and uh, who are called father of uh, uh, different fields in radiology. now mainly dealing with ultrasound it is ultrasound is a form of energy and here mainly we what we see is that how a sound wave goes and what happens when it interacts with a tissue and whatever gets reflected back is measured by our probe again so we send sound we receive sound and whatever the sound that we receive is measured in ultrasound imaging so in ultrasound we follow the principle of reflection in x ray or ct we follow the principle of attenuation as we saw in the previous images in mri we uh, we rely on the principle of relaxation okay so these are the principles various principles of different modalities that we use in imaging now this has been used uh, in olden days like it has been uh, during the world war to see the distance of different ships from the submarines uh, and uh, to find how far the submarines they used to send the sound it will go hit the the next ship or the submarine and the reflected sound is measured and this is the basic principle of ultrasound and it has been there uh, since uh, millions of years ago that even animals used to find their prey by sending the sound and getting the reflected sound so basically in uh, ultrasound imaging and we analyze the reflected sound and then we find the nature of the tissue as well as uh, the distance of the tissue so we see both nature as well as distance okay till now we knew that it was only the distance now we know that we can find the nature of the tissue as well as distance based on the reflected sound Okay, so the main thing we know that speed is equal to distance per second. This is the only formula that we use to identify the distance. Now we know again in air. So based on this, we know the speed. Now if I send a sound, I know when I have sent it and I know when I have received it. We will know the time. Now based on this, we will get the distance. Okay, so this is the main principle. now there are two types of waves that is transverse wave and the longitudinal wave only thing you need to know is the ultrasound is a kind of longitudinal wave now in ultrasound there is main thing is what we call the probe is what we keep on the patient to produce sound as well as to detect the reflected sound now this probe is made up of some crystals called as 
piezoelectric crystals okay now these crystals are called as piezoelectric crystals and they are the ones which produce a sound now what is a transducer transducer by definition means that any instrument which converts one form of energy into another form of energy that's it now what does this transducer do this will convert uh, electrical energy into sound energy and it can it also has a property of converting the sound energy back into electrical energy okay so mainly what what exactly this uh, do is we send electric current to the this piezoelectric crystal it will change its shape whenever it changes its shape it will compress the tissue next to it and whenever we we reverse the polarity it will change its shape again which will relax the tissue next to it so this if this is how the tissue the particles are arranged in the body now when i stimulate the piezoelectric crystal what it does is it will start vibrating which produces electromagnetic uh, sorry ultrasound that is compression and ray refraction compression and ray refraction so that is what is produced by our ultrasound and this will propagate along the direction of the vibration so this is how the ultrasound propagates the particles are moving parallel to the direction of propagation okay so the particles will okay i'll repeat so whenever a transducer is there the electric when we uh, send the electricity when you uh, uh, there are two electrodes in the transducer this is one electrode this is a second electrode i put positive polarity here negative polarity here the piezoelectric crystals changes their shape when they changes their shape it will move towards one direction now i reverse the polarity i make this is negative and this is positive it will again change its shape now it becomes it will move towards another side so it keeps moving so the vibration is created which will produce compression and ray refractions compression and ray refractions which is nothing but sound sound is nothing but compression and ray refraction so because of this there will be a sound produced and this sound the particles are moving parallel to the direction of propagation okay the particles are moving parallel to the direction of the propagation of sound so this will be a question what type of wave is ultrasound it is a longitudinal type of wave okay because the particles are moving parallel to the direction of propagation okay so that's one thing to be known so the particles displacement is parallel to the direction of the propagation okay so that's how uh, the moment happens so now one more important concept is that we need to know what is wavelength what is frequency uh, what is wavelength and what is frequency and what is the relation of it with the velocity now what the same compression and okay voice is breaking my internet is good is everyone can everyone hear now no it's it's clear prajit please go on please okay, go on okay. Okay. okay so there are there are compression going good going okay there are compressions there are relaxations there are compressions there are relaxations now this the distance between two compression is nothing but the wavelength this is regular physics okay the distance between two peaks or two uh, troughs is nothing but the wavelength and number of peaks that crosses per unit time is the frequency so number of the the peaks that is going per unit time is frequency so frequency is nothing but number of peaks going and if i multiply with each the distance between the two peaks is wavelength so that means that the distance covered by the sound per unit time okay so frequency is nothing but number of peaks per unit time and how many such peaks come is decided by the wavelength so this will give us this the speed okay so the we sh, we need to understand that the speed is equal to frequency into wavelength okay so this is the first thing that we need to understand okay that's one principle the other thing okay one more thing what is a normal audible frequency it is 15 to 20000 frequency anything more than 20000 is called as ultrasound anything less than 15 uh, is called as a infrasound so this this is why whatever the sound that is produced by our ultrasound machine is not audible to us even though it is sound it is not audible to us because ear has a capacity to 
receive only 15 to 20,000 hertz. Okay. Now, uh, one thing, one principle till now that I told is the speed is equal to wavelength into frequency. This is the most important uh, formula that you need to remember. Then whenever any image is formed in any modality, we call it hypo, hyper or iso. And in ultrasound, we uh, call it as echoic because we send the sound, okay, that is called as pulse. And whatever sound reflects back is called as echo. Echo of this, the pulse that we have sent. So whatever we receive is called as echo. That's why we call it as echoic. So we join it, the prefix iso, hyper, or hypo okay hyper hypo or iso echoic uh, is what we call now what happens here is whenever any tissue is brighter than the surrounding tissue we call it as hyper echoic whenever it is uh, lower than the surrounding tissue we call it as hypo echoic and whenever it is same as the surrounding thing we call it as iso echoic when it, when it was with the CT, we used to call hyper dense, iso dense, and hypo dense. Uh, I, voice is clear, right? If people are complaining, voice is not clear. Okay. Okay. So, and sometimes it will be appearing completely black. Okay. It, sometimes it will be appearing completely black. That means that we have not received any echo. Okay. Whenever we receive any information, it becomes little bright. But if I am receiving more and more and more reflected sound, it will become more and more brighter. Okay. Now, if nothing is coming back, nothing is reflected back, that means that there is no reflected sound. Okay. So there is no reflection. So whenever that happens, it will appear completely black. That means there is no echo at all. So we call it as an echoic. Okay. So an echoic. So different tissue has different capacity of reflecting the sound. Okay. The resolution is not important. Okay. So different tissue has different uh, capacity of reflecting the sound back. That's one more important point to be remembered. Okay. Out of all the things that I have told till now, only thing that we need to remember is sound is equal to frequency into wavelength. And other thing is as different tissue have different ability of reflecting the sound so different echogenicity which will help us to detect the the organ or the tissue okay one more thing is the yeah. what you can do is you can switch off your uh, video so that you will have a better uh, network huh, okay. okay yeah yeah that can be done yeah, yeah okay so the most important thing now is and that repeat the things okay Repeat the things. Repeat. Important things, stress on important things and repeat them. Okay. So that everyone understands at the end of the session, everything. Yeah. 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 yeah I'll do that. Okay. So the, another thing is we need to understand what is the freak, how the frequency affects it. This is the most important. The, the probe that we select for an ultrasound depends on the frequency. Now see, as I told, what is the frequency? Frequency is nothing but number of peaks that passes per unit time. So if they are very close to each other, the speed remains the same. If they are close to each other, more number of peaks pass per unit time. When the sound is moving in this direction, when it is propagating in this direction, the more number of peaks come in this direction, that means the frequency is higher. And if it is less number of peaks come, the frequency is lower. Now, when we see this in a tissue, if you see the same thing in a tissue, what will happen? If this is the size of a tissue, if the sound is having lower frequency, it goes like this. And if it is having higher frequency, it will be moving faster. It will be multiple times. It will be hitting the, it will be involving the tissue. So it will be involving multiple points in each tissue. So what will happen? Any sound, anything, when it propagates in any uh, tissue or any matter, it will lose its energy. So the same way, even ultrasound loses its energy in the form of heat, as well as there will be some reflection of the sound. And also there will be some refraction of the sound and there will be some amount of scattering. Okay. So this is how the sound energy is lost. And most important in this that we need to know is that 
the ultrasound produces heat energy the ultrasound produces the heat energy whenever we do a scan so that's why it it will have some adverse effect on the tissues that we are scanning relative to mri even mri has some effects but it will not cause one pinpoint heating of the tissues that's why they say you know when you do a fetal ultrasound you should not do it for a longer time so that it will cause damage to the fetal tissue that's one thing to remember that is what if i have sent 100 decibels some amount will be dissipated here as heat now if i say that some energy is dissipated as heat as it goes deeper as it goes deeper there will be loss of this 100 decibel and when i reach here it might be only 10 decibel left here now imagine if i have sent the same 100 decibel with a frequency of lower frequency then it is not involving the tissue so often as that of the higher frequency so the amount of decibels lost might be less so we might have around 80 decibels here so we can get reflection of sound reflection of the sound might be coming so we might see the reflection of sound coming from all the places even including the deeper area whereas in case of the higher frequency the reflection of the sound will be seen only from the superficial area as it becomes goes to the deeper areas there is no sound to reflect back there is no sound to reflect back so that's why it is important to know the difference between a low frequency as well as high frequency okay whenever there is lower frequency the the sound wave is get, getting less attenuated but it can penetrate deeper structure so it can penetrate deeper structure but whenever there is frequency is high it cannot penetrate deeper structures only superficial structures will be seen better as it goes deeper it will it will disappear because there is no sound energy left okay so that's that's a difference we need to know so what does this tell you if i select a higher frequency probe that means you can see only superficial structure if i select a lower frequency probe that means that i can see even the deeper structure so why don't i always use a lower frequency probe the problem is the lower frequency probe goes far away from each other imagine there is a particle here now the higher frequency is not even touching it so it may, might miss that particle the miss that that structure whereas the same structure in the lower frequency can be detected what does this tell you it tells that the resolution in higher frequency is better but whereas the resolution in lower frequency is bad so each has its own advantage and disadvantage used in superficial structure but it gives a good resolution whereas the lower frequency is used in a deeper structure but resolution is slightly bad that's why we use One minute, I just searching for my pen. Okay, so what, uh, yeah, so in a routine abdominal scan, in a routine abdominal scan, abdomen is a larger structure. So we need to go penetrate deeper structure. So we use probes of three to five hertz. Okay. And then when we need to see some superficial structures, uh, like the, the shoulder, when we do a scans of the shoulder to see the tendons, then we use some higher frequency probes like seven to 12 hertz. And when we use, when we do transvaginal or transrectal ultrasound, we need we use some probes of size 5 to 7.5 frequency okay so this is how we decide the frequency of probe so whenever we see any ultrasound machine you decide okay you decide a different uh, okay i'll use darker color we decide the probe based on the structure that you want to see if you're doing abdominal scan you will prefer a higher a lower frequency so that it penetrates deeper but the clarity won't be that good 
and whenever we want to see a superficial structure we see uh, some higher frequency probe so that the clarity will be better now in between sometimes we want to see the deeper structure but it is not clearly seen uh, such a situation is like when we see the uterus or when you see the prostate we cannot see the structure from the abdomen it is too far you do transrectal ultrasound so we use uh, we go closer to the organ that we want to scan and we use slightly higher frequency like 5 to 7.5 uh, frequencies and that's what uh, we use to measure it and if the question comes if there is option both 5 and 7.5 always the best answer is the 7.5 Okay, when you ask transrectal or transvaginal, the best answer is the seven point five. Okay, so this is how this is the the probes are divided into linear probes. The linear probes are the ones that we use. Linear probes are the ones you, you are usually of higher frequency. Then we have the curvilinear probes are usually of the low frequency. See, the, the main advantage of curvilinear is we need to cover more area. So that's why the probe is made. A wider, and that's why we use lower frequency. We need to cover more depth and wider area, and also when we use higher frequency, we use higher frequency. We use only the flat probes uh, because they are of higher frequency, and we don't want much area, but we want the clarity. Again, using of this uh, uh, straight probes will give parallel ultrasounds, which will give better resolution compared to that of the curvilinear probes. And that's the difference between the different probes. So whenever you see an ultrasound machine, first thing is you have to see what kind of probe it is. So if you want to see a deeper structure, first thing is first thing that you have to do is select a, a curvilinear probe, not selecting the the linear probe. If you select a linear probe, we may not see the pouch of Douglas, so we may not see the uh, different probe. Okay, there is no different probe for usually in a regular ultrasound machine. There is no separate probe for a uh, pediatric as such we use curvilinear probe and the linear probe so imagine if the fetus if it is too small if it is an infant okay if it is an infant then you can use the linear probe alone the linear probe itself will uh, penetrate deep enough so that you can see entire abdomen so you don't that's how you decide you don't decide uh, the probes are just given with different frequencies you see the frequency and you see what is the depth that you want to see in the patient and based on that you decide whether you want to do a linear probe or a curvilinear probe now this is a transvaginal or transrectal probe which is very uh, very thin so that it can be easily passed and in on the tip of it there is a curvilinear probe see it is very small unlike our linear probe linear probe was slightly bigger so it was covering more area this is very small it is made very small so that it can be passed through orifices but its tip is made curvilinear such that it will get a wide sector of area to cover so that a large area can be covered but we can use some uh, yeah, the intermediate frequency we need not use lower frequency here because you have gone very close to the organ now if you do a transvaginal you are keeping the probe at the level of cervix and seeing the uterus so you don't have to use low frequency you don't have to need much penetration that's why this is also having some intermediate frequency now imagine you are doing a scan on a pediatric child you are using a linear probe but linear probe is not penetrating enough then what you do you don't have to use curvilinear probe always sometimes you can even try with the the transvaginal or transrectal probe uh, to see the slightly deeper structure which is not seen on the linear probe okay okay i'll use the darker colors Okay. In uh, in case of uh, the conditions like that of a uh, chest uh, imaging, like that in the cardiac imaging, what we do in the cardiac imaging is that we don't have enough space to keep our probe. There's a very small space in between the ribs. That's when we use this kind of face array probes or the sector probes. Now this is similar to that of a linear probe, but this is also similar to the for transvaginal probe. It is very small, but it will give diverging rays. This is controlled electronically. Here we don't use uh, uh, different crystals. We here use electronic uh, control over the crystals so that it will diverge the rays uh, from the middle. So these are the different probes that we use. This is not important for us. The the phased array is not important for us. But we need to know how to use a linear probe, a curvilinear probe, and transvaginal probe. We need to know when to decide that. Okay. 
Okay, so now how exactly it works and why the color is different in different structure. Okay, now whenever we produce an ultrasound uh, wave, uh, we stimulate the piezoelectric crystal, which will start vibrating and ultrasound is produced, which will go and it some of it will be reflected and uh, the remaining will pass through it. And when it meets the next interface, again, some of it will reflect it and remaining will pass through it. So again, it continues to happen the same. So as we go deeper and deeper, what will happen to the density of the ultrasound that we have sent, what amplitude of the ultrasound that we have sent, the intensity, the loudness, keep on reducing as we go deeper. So if I go keep on going deeper and deeper, as I told, we will lose complete energy uh, in deeper and we will not get any, refle uh, any reflection. So it will completely appear black. So these structures will be appearing whiter, whichever is sending the reflect the uh, the reflected sound is appearing whiter. Now, according to this, according to this uh, physiology the, of the reflection, we need to we need to see these structures to be brighter and these structures to be less brighter, this structure to be less brighter, and this structure to be less brighter. But what we do usually is we put a correction because we know that as I go deeper and deeper, the the tissues where the sound energy is reducing. So I know uh, as I go deeper in a soft tissue, I know that there is some reduction in the sound as I go deeper and deeper. So I keep adding some sound, whatever the, uh, the information I have got, I keep adding some energy to it so that all this reflected sound will be appearing almost similar if it is reflected from the same sound. If all these are from the, no, the same tissue, now, I make the probe such a way that it will reflect back the sound and all the sound is of same intensity. It is of same intensity. Now, that is one thing we need to keep in mind. So, the change in the density, the change in the color of the image that we see is not because of the depth, even though there is some loss of energy. We correct it by something called as TGC. Okay, it is a gain. Gain that we give is measured, uh, it is increased by TGC and that's uh, uh, that's what will correct the whatever the gain is supposed to happen. Okay, now because of that and the entire image will be appearing of same density if the tissue is made up of same. But in the body what happens is if there are three different type of structures, one it can be liquid, it can be a li uh, soft tissue density like liver or it can be very hard dense structures like that of the stone okay now whenever a sound goes and hits the stone all the light will all the sound will be reflected back so do you expect any sound to go behind the stone so do you expect any sound to go behind the stone no you don't expect any sound to go beyond the stone correct now when i send the same sound wave uh, yeah, so there is no structure which is going behind the stone. Remember this in mind. So whatever the reflected sound is received as echo, so it will be very bright or it will be less brighter. It will be very bright. Okay, so it will be appearing very bright. So we call this as hyper echoic. Okay, it will be appearing hyper echoic. Now imagine if the same sound I am sending to a tissue, soft tissue, like liver, what will happen? It will allow some sound to pass through it and it will reflect the remaining. Now what will happen? Will it be as bright as stone? Will it be as bright as stone? It will not be as bright as stone. Okay, it will not be hypo. It will be almost isoechoic. Okay, it will almost be uh, iso to hypoechoic. Okay, it will not be completely hypoechoic because it also depends on how compared to the stone it is usually hypoechoic. Now imagine if I if I send the same uh, sound through water, what will happen? All the the uh, the sound is passed through it. So when all the sound is passed through it, will you expect any color change in the in the in the ultrasound image? You will not see any color change in the image, so it appears black. So we have a black image because of water. So Water will not reflect anything, so it appears black. Liver will reflect somewhat, so it will be appearing gray. And the uh, stone will be appear, uh, the reflecting almost all the sound, so it will be appearing white. Okay. Now, when this is not reflecting any sound, we call it as anechoic. 
okay it is an anechoic whereas stone it is hyperechoic whereas liver is slightly hypoechoic compared to that of water or of the stone okay now the doubt comes what will happen when there is air okay now what will happen when there is air now the reflection as i told it doesn't depend on the density like how i told or like how we discussed in case of uh, like how we discussed uh, in x ray the the sound doesn't uh, gets reflected like how the, the tissues were attenuating in the x ray now what happens here is the first thing you have to understand is if there are two medium okay if there are two medium now if it is going from one medium to another medium if we consider our mirrors okay if you consider light and the glass now normally light will pass through one medium to another medium when it passes to one medium to another medium it gets refracted that's one thing it can happen when the refractive index of the two mediums are sufficient it will get total internal reflection okay so these are the changes that we see in the light similarly in in sound the different tissue have a different resistance to the sound okay the resistance offered by the the different tissues now imagine this is the resistance offered by one is the resistance offered by the two now the amount of light that gets reflected depends on how much is the difference between these two tissues okay now if the difference between the two tissues or two medium is very high then the higher amount of reflection so this is the formula which gives the the amount of reflection you don't have to remember the formula but you need to know that this is called as the resistance offered by any tissue is called as impedance okay now the difference in the tissue tells that how much sound is getting reflected back okay the uh, the difference in the sound tells that how much difference in the resistance offered gives us how much sound is reflect uh, reflected back or the difference in the impedance is what is this uh, z1 and z2 or nothing but impedance or the resistance offered by the tissue gives us how much sound is reflected back very important to remember why did the stone reflect the sound back everything because if you see the impedance okay i have an image which shows the impedance i'll show you the image later which will give the impedance of the different structure the air is very low the stone or bone is very high and in between comes a soft tissue okay if this is a soft tissue the the air is very less whereas bone the impedance is very high the resistance offered is very high so when uh, the sound is going from the soft tissue to the stone almost everything will be reflected back same thing when uh, the uh, the sound is going from soft tissue to air the almost all the sounds are reflected back so now tell me what will be the the brightness of uh, the air will it be iso hypo or hyper yeah it will be hyper okay it will be hyper why it is hyper because whenever any uh, any tissue is present and right next to it there is air what happens to the impedance uh, the difference in the impedance or the resistance offered by the tissue it is very high difference z1 and z2 the difference is very high so almost all the light gets reflected back so air looks whiter stone looks whiter so this is important thing that we need to know in an ultrasound okay so the stone looks whiter the air looks whiter in ultrasound and the soft tissue will be looking isoechoic now compared to the soft tissue the fat will be slightly more reflecting yes how to differentiate air from uh, the stone okay now the stone is having hard irregular surface and there is air here okay there is air here both are appearing whiter now normally there is one phenomenon that is called as twinkling artifact okay twinkling artifact when i do a color doppler okay now color doppler color doppler is based on the principle of changing the frequency when any sound meets the moving object 
okay so okay i'll tell about the twinkling artifact uh, when i uh, deal with doppler as such okay now remember that twinkling artifact so what exactly is twinkling artifact does whenever the sound comes here the stone is not a regular surface it is having very irregular surface so the ultrasound can come and hit at any point of the surface so the reflected sound all the sounds are at different different frequencies so what does the doppler pick up doppler picks up multiple different frequencies so the change in the frequency is nothing but the change is, it will assess at a speed at which the the particle is moving even though stone is not moving at different speed because it is having irregular surface the frequency of the reflected sound changes it will think that something is is moving very fast so this entire thing will take up color in doppler moving things take up color because there are multiple reflected rays it will take up multiple colors so that's what is important it will take up multiple colors so that is what is called as a twinkling artifact that is seen by the uh, stone which will not be seen by a uh, air so whenever i see any bright any bright structure one thing is you clinically correlate the second thing is you put a color doppler and see if there is twinkling artifact if there is no twinkling artifact then it is a it is a air if there is twinkling artifact then it is stone now one more thing we can see is that if this is a pelvic elicial system if this is a pelvic elicial system okay this is a pelvic elicial system now two things you can expect inside a pelvic elicial system one there can be a stone here okay one there can be a stone here another thing there can be air here so how are you differentiating a stone from air just by looking of the picture of it how can you tell that this is air and this is stone can you tell that only by looking at the the picture of ultrasound image that i have got can you tell that it, it is a stone and it is air yes we can tell we can tell yeah the lower one is stone the upper one is air that's why i drew it like this so upper one which is non dependent is usually air which is dependent is usually stone this is one of the technique you can use and then we can use clinical correlation and then we can use the twinkling artifact okay so this this is one thing that you need to remember now this is a orbit now i will tell you different modalities of ultrasound okay you need to know different modalities of ultrasound i'll just brief you about how exactly imaging was started okay in, from olden days now the probe can be kept on the orbit to image the orbit and that's how the olden days what we used to call as amplitude scan or a scan was done okay now this is used only in the uh, ophthalmology uh, sometimes they use but now also the use has reduced we as such in radiology don't use the amplitude scan now, how does amplitude scan work now imagine there is an orbit an orbit is made up of various tissues now let's not forget about that orbit you just think that there are multiple tissues are present at different level of the orbit now imagine if i send ultrasound i send ultrasound first i'll send ultrasound once okay sorry okay if i send i'll send ultrasound once and what will happen it will reflect the sound and this reflected sound is measured and you measure how much amount yes if you want to differentiate between a uh, stone and air usually we do first thing is you you see the position then th uh, you, then you do color doppler then there are few other points i am going to tell it soon there are some artifacts which will also give some clues see radiology is not again again directly you can tell this is stone this is air we need to correlate it and we need to uh, do different uh, techniques to find out whether it is stone or air there are so many other small small findings which i'll tell one by one okay i'll tell when i i'll tell you some of the artifacts which will help us to detect dif uh, differentiate between the stone and air and uh, it will be uh, dealt later okay now now you just i'll tell you soon okay everything i'll cover but uh, i think it, it might be uh, taught in the next class as well okay so this is just i thought like i'll do the basics i'll continue this class for uh, two days or three days so that i can cover everything okay yeah why stone and air uh, appears white see 
the the reflection okay someone has a doubt why stone and air appears white okay see now in ultrasound the reflection is always dependent on the tissues through which it passes okay so it depends on the tissue through which it passes it doesn't only depend on what is the density of the tissue or anything it depends on from what tissue to what tissue it is going what property of the tissue which decides the reflection is the impedance okay impedance is nothing but the resistance offered by any tissue now if i compare air if i compare a uh, soft tissue if i compare a uh, bone the resistance offered by the bone is uh, very high and resistance offered by the uh, the, the impedance of the air is very low and a soft tissue is in between now the difference between the impedance of the soft tissue and bone is very high so the all the light which is, all the sound which is going gets reflected back the difference of impedance between air and soft tissue is very high so let it be positive or negative doesn't matter how much is the difference matters so the formula goes like this r is equal to z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 forget about the de denominator it is always constant the numerator is the how much is the difference between two decides the how much sound gets reflected back that's why the difference between the soft tissue and the stone as well as air is very high so always if you compare anything the difference between that and air or bone is very high so it gets reflected back but air some changes happen which i'll tell uh, in when i'm telling the the artifacts okay now understand about the amplitude scan or a scan which is how the ultrasound was introduced initially now what exactly happens here is whenever i stimulate whenever i stimulate the ultrasound or uh, the uh, piezoelectric crystal it will send ultrasound and receives the echo back now whatever the echo is received back will give us the total amplitude of of the sound which is coming from here okay so it will receive the sound from all these structures the star the box and the star so all the these structure gives one amplitude so that's what i measured okay i get one line so if i send one more sound to slightly deeper to it here at this area we are not having any structures so it will not send back any sound okay now i i stimulate it again and then it will go stimulate the next structure now this all will send some echo i'm just measuring how much is the sound sent and how much is the sound sent back it will give an amount and that is measured here second amplitude like that we continue the process and we get multiple amplitudes and we get multiple lines now this is how we get a a mode scan so we get multiple lines okay could not hear a few things okay see we, uh, in a mode scan or amplitude scan what we do is we stimulate uh, we we vibrate the piezoelectric crystals such that it will send some sound and reflects back so this happens at different levels from here the sound gets reflected back but here th there is no sound getting reflected back from here there is sound getting reflected back but from here there is no sound getting reflected back from here there is sound reflecting but here there is no sound same way it happens wherever it meets two different interfaces the sound gets reflected back wherever it is getting reflected back will be measured as one amplitude okay so whatever gets reflected back is measured as amplitude so this is how we get multiple lines so what this can tell is if this is my orbit so this is my orbit there is one structure at here at at this level there is one structure 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 at this level so multiple lines tells that there is some structure at different levels that's all it doesn't tell more than that okay so that is the amplitude scan i'll show you the image of, of an amplitude scan before that let's see how a b mode scan so this is if this is a uh, this is a ct image don't think this is an ultra this is a ct image now imagine if i keep a probe here if i keep a probe here now it has to measure all these objects inside now a mode just measure the amplitude that means it was just telling that there is an object now what happens when i do a b mode scan okay when i do a b mode scan first thing is there is okay there are multiple objects now what i do is i stimulate only one row okay i stimulate only one row like how i did in amplitude mode 
and I'll pick up information from each point. Okay, the same way like how I did in amplitude mode, I measured from here, I got one dot. 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 So it will be plotted in the, it will be plotted in my image. Okay, that's one thing I did. Now what I do, I go next level of crystal. I go stimulate the next level of crystal. Okay, and what will happen? You will get next row. Then what will happen? I'll stimulate the next level of crystal. So I'll get one more line. So we'll get multiple points which are forming a image. Okay, multiple reflected rays forms an image. So we get a final image which is made up of multiple points which are corresponding to multiple tissues within the body. Okay, so this is how we get an image in a B mode ultrasound. So B mode will give us a picture of an image. It will not just give the amplitude, it will give a picture of image which we can see similar to that of a CT image. Okay, I'll show you the images. Now, and the, the different part of the tissue will become of different density. Some will look more brighter, some will be less brighter. This depends on how much is the reflection happening there. So more reflected, uh, sound from uh, one tissue, it will look more brighter, less reflected sound will look less brighter. That's how we, we know what structure is there. What. So if I see this brightness, I know that there is some calcium or the stone here. If I see this level again, I know there is some calcium or stone. If I know this level, I know there is some calcium or stone. So this might be a bone here or this might be a stone here. So this brightness tells us what are the different structures. That's how we get a B mode image. Okay. So this is an example of a B mode image. So this is an example of a B mode image. So we see here some structure is looking very bright. It is a bone. We see. Yeah, B stands for brightness mode. Okay. So this is a bone here. So here there is a lung here. See here there is a lung here. Okay. Here there is a lung here. So which is looking slightly less whiter. And imagine this, this is not uh, reflecting any sound. What is this structure which does not reflect any sound, which will allow all the sound to pass through it? What allows all the sound to pass through it? Ha uh, yeah, that is hard, but what allows all the sound to pass through it? Any liquid or fluid? The, what is this What is this thing which is allowing all the, all the, uh, the light to pass through it? Again, this is also fluid. Okay, again, this is also fluid. If I'm seeing a heart and surrounding the heart, there is fluid. This is nothing but amniotic fluid. It's a fetal antenatal ultrasound. Okay, it's a fetal ultrasound. So there is a, a chest in which we can see the lung, a collapsed lung. There is no air there. And there is a heart and heart is appearing a four chamber. And we can see the, the water is appearing blacker. I told water will allow all the light to pass through, so, uh, sound to pass through, so it will appear blacker. The uh, lung will be appearing slightly grayish. And the bone is appearing whitish. So this is what we learned till now. Okay, this is how we see an image. When it is brighter, you think of very bright. You think of stone or air. When it is grayer, you think of any soft tissue. When it is looking blacker, you think of any fluid. Okay, so that's how you interpret. Now, one more form of image is the AM mode or the motion mode. Okay, it will it will show how the movement happens. Now, I told in the previous image what how the imaging was done. First, the, the first we sent sent ultrasound at this level and found at each point what is the reflectivity and then at second point we saw what is the reflectivity and at the third point we saw what was the reflectivity that's how we found the b mode now what i what i was telling was see this is how uh, we've got a b mode uh, image now what i want is i want to see how the mitral valve moves how the tricuspid valve moves so what i do is i don't want to image the rest of the things seeing the so what i'm doing is i'm just imaging i'm just imaging uh, i just want only at this level so what i can do is instead of stimulating all these things and getting the reflex back so what i do is i get the reflex i get the the sound only from this level okay it depends on whichever level i want to do so what i do i keep a probe at the level of the the whatever the moving structure i want to see and i see what there are different structures again here See, I'll show you in this image. Now, I want to see how the triangle moves. See, this triangle is a structure. Imagine this is a mitral valve. Okay, so I want to do how that, I want to see how this triangle moves. Okay, imagine the triangle is a mitral valve. Now, what I do, I stimulate only at that level. I stimulate the crystals of the probe only at that level. So, I send 
uh, some uh, the sound at that level and i get some dots like how i got in the the b mode now what i do, what happens is after some time the mitral valve moves it in the mitral valve you know it it goes up and down mitral valve goes up and down now if this is the heart and this is our mitral valve we know that mitral valve will go down then come up now what will happen to the mitral valve it will go down now i'll do the second image now what will happen the second image is formed where the mitral valve has moved down now now i say, again what will happen the mitral valve again moves up now again what will happen i'll send one more image now the mitral valve has moved up okay mitral valve has moved up now again i'll see with the time again mitral valve comes down again i image so again mitral valve comes down so again i image mitral valve goes up then same thing i continue so i get a image where we can see the moving structure is changing like this but the non moving structure appears very linear okay so this is how i see how the structure moves now if i see this is moving like this we know that this is one heartbeat this is the one closing of uh, once closing of the mitral valve the closing of the sec uh, mitral valve the second beat so if i measure the distance the time between these two it is the time of one heartbeat okay that's how we measure the heartbeat that's how you see a moving structure in a m mode okay so this is how we see a moving structure in m mode specially used for uh, uh, to see the movement of heart in the the fetus and see the heartbeat okay so this is how we get a linear structure and the baby structure baby structure such as that it is moving movement is happening this is about the m mode now as i told the display uh, can be happening in uh, different modes it can be a mode it can be b mode it can be m mode so the first thing is this is how the b mo a mode appears initially there is cornea here reflects the sound we get one line anterior uh, surface of the lens it's the interface interface between the water and the lens so reflects the sound we get one wave then the posterior surface of the lens we get the third wave and then we get the retina reflecting the sound so we get normally a four waves are seen whereas when we see uh, the same patient who had a hematoma inside okay who had a hematoma inside so what will happen now one wave we saw here the second one we saw here the third one we saw here the fourth one will come from here and fifth one will be from the fifth is i mean the fourth one is normally seen four are normally seen one fifth extra one will come because of the hematoma formed there okay hematoma is not the blood i am talking the clotted blood or a tumor imagine this is a tumor here or that if there is a tumor again we will see one extra line so that's what we see in the uh, a mode and this is how the image looks we just see few peaks okay this is how an a mode ultrasound image look we'll see multiple peaks each one corresponds to different different things so that's how we get a a mode uh, scan i'll show you better images in the next classes this i just uh, wanted to show how exactly image is formed so this is how a b mode image is looking now this they, we will not see these stripes the final image will be having fusion of this stripe so how is the image formed so first i get one line all the density see this looks just like dots and blacks and dots and blacks bright dark gray so this is how the image is formed the so one line is filled then you fill like that two three four five six like that the entire image is formed just out of dots blacks and grays okay whites blacks and grays will make the complete image we are just measuring how much is the reflectivity from the each point in the image this is just a developed version of a mode scan we will get the picture of the organ okay this is actually the portal vein and uh, the splenic vein uh, the formation of the portal vein and this is usually this is actually a image of pancreas okay this is how a b mode image looks okay there is some structure here we can see multiple points forming an image it's not a good image i'll show you better image so this is how see this is a again the the b mode scan in which we can see the heart so i saw that there is mitral valve here so i keep my m mode scan at the level of mitral valve and i measure it see how i got multiple straight lines here whereas at the level of mitral valve i am seeing the baby form so this is nothing but the movement of mitral valve once it was higher once it goes lower once it goes higher once it goes lower so each second each second in my ultrasound i can measure up to 60 times i can measure up to uh, the six, not only 60 times i am giving an example 
each second there will be 60 times i'm taking image imagine if i'm cutting each second 60 times each heartbeat is around about 0.8 second each heartbeat is about 0.8 second in between that i have imaged it 60 times that's how fast i can image so that's how that's why we are not seeing it as point we are seeing it as continuous line because continuously we are imaging at every point of the mitral valve that's how i am getting this image so this kind of image if you see is an m mode and in this what we can see if you see the distance between this and this it it is the the distance the time of each heart rate and if i see in this image this is the time and this will give us the the length this will give us the length and this will give us the time okay this is whereas in the b mode we had length and breadth so we are getting a 2d images of length and breadth but here we are seeing only length and time m mode is used in anesthesia for nerve block m mode is not used okay i am not sure but i don't think m mode we can use for anesthesia anesthesia we use b mode why because we want we want an image we want an image to see okay see now imagine forget about anesthesia you i showed you one see i imagine if i want to inject something to heart okay if i want to inject something to heart what i have to do i have to send a needle okay needle is like a bone or a bone or it is a stone so it reflects all the sound back it reflects all the sound back it looks very bright so i just send a needle i can see the needle when i am passing and then I'm kept a probe here. And as I go deeper, I can see, I can visualize it clearly in uh, the B mode. And then I can go inside the heart and I can inject whatever I want. I mean, I'm giving hypothetical situation. Don't think we do that. We don't do that, but I'm just telling you because I have this image. So that's how we give anesthesia in the, in anesthesia, what we do is we use, we see the nerves. We can see the nerves. We can see the vessels next to it. We just send a needle here and we give the flu the anesthesia around without injuring the vessel and without injecting it to the vessel so it will cause uh, the uh, now to paralyze that's how we use b mode that's that's what i know about uh, the anesthesia I, I don't know if they are using any recently if they're trying to use m mode or something i don't think m mode can be used that way okay uh, so can you use m mode to find uh, ejection fraction uh see m mode as such cannot give us ejection fraction it will give us just the movement of the movement of uh, the valve but there are some uh, there are some uh, softwares uh, in which we do echocardiography in which we see we see the size of the heart we see the size of the heart initially and then we when it contracts and relax contracts and relax both the times we see the size of the heart and we can see the ejection of the uh, we, we can get the ejection fraction also by using doppler we know how much is the, the speed at which it is going we can get the speed as well okay end diastolic volume we can uh, measure and systolic volume we can measure the difference we can find as uh, the the ejection fraction it is not the m mode which gives us this it is again the b mode only which gives us all this okay Okay, so this is how we get uh, A mode, B mode, and M mode. So this is again a practical image which is showing the moment. See, around that uh, it is going through the ventricle. So there is no reflection at all. There is only water, right? That's why it is looking only no reflection. So uh, again, we are seeing the movement of the mitral valve, which is at different levels. Above it, if you see, if it is passing through the heart or something, it is showing the straight lines. And if there is slight motion, it will also show slight motion. Sometimes what will happen when we measure the heart, entire heart is also moving right so it will also show small waves it will also show small waves but the vent the mitral valve will show the maximum movement that's how we identify small waves fine a large wave mitral valve so you, you can interpret it that way so whole point in this you have to understand how an image is formed so based on this we can interpret uh, any images so normally uh, in a soft tissue the the speed of uh, ultrasound is 1540 meter per second as you know, 330 is in the air and it is much faster in the bone. And we, here are the different velocities. Very important to remember is the, the speed at the air. We don't have to remember, but it is normally, we know that it is 330 and water is 1480. Where as you see how fast in the bone and you see the soft tissue, important is to remember the soft tissue 1540. They might ask in the exam, okay? 1540, you need to remember, okay? Yeah, so this is again an image of a liver. 
so what 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 do you think this structure inside is what do you think this structure here is what do you think this structure is okay the structure is what do you think this black thing is yeah it is a vessel okay we can, uh, it is a vessel it is a vessel good good so that's all we need to interpret as of now as this is this it can be a vessel but can it be only vessel can it be a, a, a bile duct a dilated bile duct exactly that's a good question why not bile duct so that's what i may not be able to tell if i am not used to seeing a, a ultrasound image it may be bile duct based on what your knowledge it may be bile duct it may be vein it may be artery so what will help us differentiate what will help us differentiate the flow inside this will help us differentiate the bile duct has very 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 slow uh, movement of the bile whereas the vein has slightly higher flow uh, detectable flow whereas uh, the artery is having very high flow so doppler will help us to identify the what is this structure exactly is so as of now if i ask you you need to know that this can be artery this can be vein this can be bile duct okay so these are the three things there are things that if you are regularly seeing ultrasound you will be able to identify otherwise you will not be able to identify is again the same thing uh, as i told the attenuation can happen because of absorption scattering or reflection as i go deeper deeper and deeper we'll be losing from 100 decibel it might become 10 decibel or 0 decibel so whenever we get a reflection from deeper structure we'll be adding uh, 5 decibel here uh, 10 decibel here 20 decibel here so we are adding decibels uh, for these things this is called as time gain compensation as the time becomes more and more uh, it it is it means that it is coming from the deeper structures so as the time is more and more we are giving more and more compensation that's why it is called as time gain compensation tgc so that's what uh, will make our image looks very uniform otherwise in the previous image uh, we were supposed to see this as a uh, brighter and this as darker the both are liver but both the part of the liver the superficial and deep is appearing uniformly brighter that's because i have given time gain compensation more as i go deeper that's why more time is uh, uh, the echo is come after the more time we are giving more gain so it is more compensation i have given as i go deeper that's why we get a uniform image okay that's what you need to remember so that's about the attenuation which i already told now the acoustic impedance of different uh, uh different structure is different so this is again gives the acoustic impedance again it has a different value see the air impedance acoustic impedance is very low 0.0004 very low resistance whereas the bone is 7.8 whereas if you see the soft tissue it is in between around 1.3 to 1.6 see how much is the difference when when there is an interface like this air or bone we will see high reflectivity both will look very bright on uh, imaging okay so that's the basics uh, of uh, ultrasound the rest uh, from i'll take in the next class so overall till now uh, tgc set using auto gain yes see uh, the olden days what uh, usg be clear in obese person also okay i'll tell you everything okay so let's re uh, revise everything first first thing is uh, uh, whenever the sound is going through two structures of different impedance what will happen when there is two highly different impedance between the two structures the reflection the reflection of the sound happens maximum so r is equal to z1 minus z2 that is nothing but impedance of one minus impedance of the two it is similar to refractivity uh, refractive index uh, we use in the glass for the reflection of the, the light the similar thing okay this is what uh, decides okay directly proportional to the difference in the uh, impedance so that's why air Uh, and uh, tissue and air interface reflects maximum uh, tissue and bone interface reflects maximum tissue and stone interface reflects uh, the maximum and it will look brighter okay other than that uh, we know uh, the higher frequency probes are used for the superficial structures the lower frequency probes are used for the deeper structures and the, the higher frequency are about uh, uh, 7 to 12 or even up to 20 hertz we have and for the the deep the deeper structures we will use 2 to 5 hertz and in between we have the transvaginal probe or transrectal probe 
of 5 to 7 hertz which you can use okay so this is not strictly followed like you don't have to use particular probes even in abdomen if you want to see the wall of abdomen again i prefer the high frequency probe if i want to go slightly deeper into the wall then i again go to slightly deeper uh, i'll still prefer the uh, high frequency but if i want to see the deeper structures i cannot see i'll have to go for the curvilinear probe imagine a very lean patient again i can use only high frequency probe and uh, do the scan uh, that's how i can do the scan so if the stone uh, okay so if the stone and st uh, stone is there will it be zero impedance yes uh, so what exactly happens uh, whenever uh, there is stone and stone so your doubt is whenever it's a stone and stone is there what will happen so i sent a, a hundred decibel sound how much decibel will be reflected back from the stone i have sent hundred decibel sound how much decibel will be reflected back by the stone 100 decibel so will i see any interface beyond this will i see any any interface beyond this no you don't see any interface beyond this that's a very important thing why we cannot do a scan in the chest is very difficult because bone is there that's the first thing why the echocardiography the probe is very small and it will diverge the beam so wherever there is bone wherever there is stone you cannot assess the structure behind wherever there is air again we cannot assess the structure behind it so this is why imagine you want to uh, uh, do a scanning of the abdomen and patient is having constipation for a long time it's filled with air you cannot see the deeper structures the the radiologist will say the suboptimal scan which you will not understand why is he standing suboptimal scan it's because his interface is not clear he cannot see the deeper structure there are so many reasons which like stone bone air if anything comes in between you cannot see the deeper structure so more most of the abdominal scan gets difficult because of the abdominal air which will not allow the, the scan to happen now imagine if the patient is having perforation imagine the patient is having perforation and patient is lying down supine position can i do my scan and can i see the deeper structures Can I do the deeper? Can I see the deeper structures? You will not be able to see the deeper structures because there is air which is which is floating up. So if I make him erect, then I can see some some lower structures. Or if I put him uh, uh, upside down, we can see the upper structures somewhat clear because air, whenever it is present, it's not easy to uh, see the deeper structures. So. Uh, so that's a doubt of someone had asked had a doubt when the stone and stone is there about the reflectivity or when there is air and air there is no question of air and air because once the air is there it is reflecting almost everything so again very difficult to see okay any other doubts Okay, then uh, I will continue the rest of the topic in the next class.